Hey guys, Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio here. Uh, just wanted to do a, uh, a quick video regarding an article I found uh, this morning when I was uh, getting some stuff done for a higher level indoctrination. I was uh, signing into my uh, my account, and uh, they had like a little top news tab, and the headline was "Reactions Making Some Sense of the Oregon Standoff." And uh, I regrettably clicked on it and read it, and uh, it is uh, uh, completely wrong. Uh, the author has no clue what he's talking about. Uh, so I figured I would uh, inform you guys, and uh, even for people who don't study the Constitution or anything, it's it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad nonetheless. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Illinois State University professor of politics and government Lane Crothers is the author of Rage on the Right: The American Militia Movement from Ruby Ridge to Homeland Security. He says militia, militia groups like the one occupying buildings on federal land in Oregon have a unique interpretation of citizenship under the U.S. Constitution that motivates their actions. So, um, and just to kind of preface this, this is just what you would expect from higher level indoctrination. Uh, leftist tendencies do come up a couple times, and just an overall lack of knowledge uh, within, their, within their supposed specialties, uh, which I have uh, found out a number of times uh, within uh, uh, even just at Harlan Community College. Uh, regarding professor status and sub-professor status. So uh, let's move forward into uh, Crowther's article. Quote, uh, actually, one more thing. <laughs> um, and notice that he's written a book on this. He's written a book on this, so he's obviously an expert, right? Or you would at least expect him to be an expert. But no, just, just, just uh, you'll see why he's not. Just uh, let's get into it. Quote, the group in Oregon is a branch of the militia movement known as the Constitutionalists. The constitutionalists, among other things, have concocted a theory of liberty in the Constitution that creates two classes of citizens. People who could have been citizens of the United States when the Constitution was written, referred to as sovereign citizens, and everyone else. So automatically, wouldn't every patriotic American be a constitutionalist? Wouldn't, isn't every politician a constitutionalist? I mean, they quote it all the time. I mean, obviously, they don't, they don't follow it, but, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but isn't every patriotic American a constitutionalist? Apparently he's not. Apparently he's not. I'm sure he's a socialist. I don't know that for sure. That's speculation. But, uh, <laughs> and additionally, aren't, uh, aren't uh, militias specifically enumerated in the Constitution as well as uh, United States uh, statutory code? Yes, they are. They definitely are. That first sentence there is, uh, is, is honestly retarded. He's, uh, he's being intellectually dishonest. Uh, and I, I kind of want to read his book now because I think that'd be interesting. But it'd be a waste of time. It would be a waste of time. It would be a good, uh, comedy, a, a good little uh, comedy book, I guess you could say. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see. Is there anything else? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I actually know a few of the people on the ground there, and uh, most of them are just constitutionalists. They aren't sovereign citizens. Uh, now, there are a couple sovereign citizens there. Uh, one of them was interviewed, uh, and you, you, uh, you heard her use their, uh, their jargon. But the majority of these people are not sovereign citizens. They're just flat-out constitutionalists. Uh, just flat out constitutionalists, and uh, he mentions uh, two classes of citizens, and that actually uh, um, that actually is true. Um, Kyle Rudin and Gary Hunt have both written uh, at length about uh, state citizenship, and that is a valid legal concept. Uh, there are a bunch of Supreme Court rulings uh, validating it. So uh, I want to make sure to make that distinction here. Uh, sovereign citizens have tried this shit for a long time, and enough of them have gone to prison for these tactics that uh, they should have learned their lesson by now. But as far as state citizens, that is a legal valid concept, and I know people who have actually done that and done it successfully. So I just want to make sure to make that distinction here. But, uh, uh, yeah, let's go forward. Uh, quote, people who have been citizens of the United States at the time of the writing of the Constitution include white male property holders. Such people, according to the Constitutionalists, have special rights under the Constitution. The theory is that such people are sovereign citizens, the people who made the social contract that the Constitution represents. Excuse me. Those citizens, by definition, cannot agree to any transgressions of their rights on the part of the state they created to protect their rights. This, in turn, empowers them to nullify or otherwise refuse to follow federal and state laws that they find inimical to their rights. They are the sovereigns since they made the contract. The state is their servant. Now, isn't it kind of known that, like the the, the constitutional republic, the best gov the best government ever set up in the history of the world, is isn't everyone supposed to uh, like not let the government trample on their rights? Isn't that kind of like the American tradition? I thought so, but apparently not to him. Apparently not. Oh boy. 
So yeah, you kind of saw the leftist narrative, the kind of little little bit of the leftist narrative leaking in there. Uh, only white male property owners uh, have special rights under the Constitution, which actually kind of leads to a contradiction because I know a few sovereign citizens that are black, and uh, they are they're common law lawyers and they're full in on this stuff. So uh, apparently, not only white male property holders can be sovereign citizens. Sorry, bud, you are completely wrong. <coughs> And uh, I think it's also important to mention that uh, all human beings are born with natural rights. Rights are not granted to them by governments. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, he's he's kind of ma- he, he'll make that claim a couple times here, and I want to make sure to address that. And he, he mentions the, uh, the social contract a couple times here, but I don't feel like getting into that uh, uh, into that uh, into that myth today. Uh, we will uh, um, we will uh, get to that later on, I'm sure. So let's move forward. Uh, quote, this is the source of such groups' claims that the federal government has no authority over them, that only duly represented legal agencies in force before the Constitution was written can have legal authority over sovereign citizens. And since the federal government cannot have, by definition, existed before the Constitution was written, its agents, law enforcement or the inter- Internal Revenue Service, cannot have power over the sovereign citizen. Okay, um... So he says that sovereign citizens are constitutionalists. That was the uh, the fringe group of the fringe militia group, the constitutionalists. And then he says that the constitution has no authority over them. This doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? It really doesn't. And I will say he has obviously never looked into the sovereign citizens. Uh, his claims are not based in fact. Um, there may be half truths here and there, but it's 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 not the it's not the truth. Uh, what they actually believe is that the United States is a for-profit corporation and uh, that they can use uniform commercial code to escape the state. Uh, they also believe in fallacies such as accepted for value. Uh, so yeah, he's completely out of base here. He's obviously never looked into the sovereign citizens. But uh, uh, yeah, let's move forward to the uh, last two paragraphs here. According to this belief, everyone else, women, minorities, immigrants, are 14th Amendment citizens. They're gu- guaranteed their rights by the 14th Amendment. This allegedly means that they are not sovereign citizens since they are made citizens by the Constitution rather than making the Constitution as such. Hence, women and minorities have no rights beyond those granted or taken away by federal action, uh, court orders, and laws. So, uh, it appears he is confused here. Um, I've personally witnessed uh, a number of patriots uh, uh, he is speaking of invoke the 14th Amendment by using, like, say, a Second Amendment argument uh, when the government they are dealing with is at the state level. Now, I'm not going to get into that. If you want more information, um, I will link Kyle Reardon's uh, article on state citizenship in uh, the description. You guys can look into that a little more. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, additionally, the uh, 14th Amendment is, wi- it is significant within the uh, sovereign citizen community. Uh, yet, it, is al- it also is for the true legal concept of state citizenship. So, again, I want to make that distinction. 14th Amendment is important when it comes to state citizenship, but uh, that is a legal valid concept, unlike uh, sovereign citizens. And again, I, I don't know why he's placing so much emphasis on women, minorities, and immigrants. Uh, doesn't matter. Like I said, every human being is born with natural rights, and and right and uh, and those rights don't come from governments. So uh, let's get into this uh, last paragraph here and get this wrapped up. Quote: In the standoff with the militia group in Oregon, the worst thing the government could do is rush in with guns and try aggressive law enforcement. This just feeds the militia narrative of an abusive state. Besides the underlying crime, whether trespassing or illegal ranching, are not death penalties. There is no reason to storm in and fire away to remove trespassers, even armed ones, likely causing the deaths of both the militia and many law enforcement officers. In any case, this group will eventually give up and can always be arrested when there is no group of armed reactionaries defending them. Or, if they stay, they effectively imprison themselves. We do not need another Ruby Ridge or Waco, two colossal government blunders that did not in any way justify the militia movement, but undoubtedly empowered it." End quote. So it's really easy to see that he hasn't looked into sovereign citizens, and he's also not looked into the uh, um, the, situa- the uh, situation at the Hammond Ranch, as well as uh, the uh, takeover of the Malhor uh, National Wildlife Refuge. He's obviously never looked into I- either of those things. Reason being, well, the Hammonds were found guilty of arson. Uh, illegal ranching was not an issue here. That was nothing that was ever brought up. I read through the court documents, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, never, it was never brought up. Never brought up. And the trespassing charge is something completely different. He's talking about two different things here. The illegal ranching have to do with the Hammond Ranch, which is not the Malhor Wildlife Range, or uh, Refuge. And the uh, illegal ranching, or yeah, the uh, uh, the illegal ranching would be would have taken place at their at their ranch, and the trespassing would have taken place at the refuge. Uh, it's two completely different things. And uh, some of the folks that are at the Malhor National Wildlife Refuge are not there. Um, 
well, obviously they're they they they're supporting the Hamas, but their their object their uh, their goal is uh, to quell uh, federal government overreach when it comes to the uh, the, the ranches uh, in that area. Um, so yeah, he's obviously never looked into uh, either of those situations. But uh, uh, as you can see, I had fun reading this art this article. It was uh, definitely cringeworthy. Uh, but if you have anything to uh, elaborate on, you got any uh, comments? Uh, feel free to put those in uh, uh, obviously in the comments section below. I will uh, put those uh, two articles on state citizenship in uh, the description, and I'll, I'll also link this one in there as well. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is exactly what I would expect. Uh, I imagine, uh, um, as uh, as with progressivism, uh, it's only going to get pro progressively worse going from Harlan Community College to uh, Illinois State University. So, uh, yeah, I guess that kind of uh, wraps this up. And, uh, yeah, make sure to uh, um, like, share, and subscribe to this video. Uh, sub like, like and share this video and then subscribe to the channel. And uh, make sure to tune in uh, Sunday uh, for Liberty, Liberty Under Attack Radio at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time at fprnradio.com. Uh, we'll be joined by Derek Bros. Uh, and we'll discuss agorism and spirituality as part of the second edition of the Direct Action series. And uh, then we will be interviewing uh, a band, uh, an East Coast metal band uh, called I'm From the Government and I'm Here to Help. So, yeah, it's uh, turned out to be a pretty good show. So, uh, yeah, make sure to tune in and I'll also put uh, all that information uh, below as well. So that's all I got for you today. Uh, so, yeah, laissez-faire. <laughs>